Now that we understood the general uh, view of your admin dashboard after you log in, we're going to start the course by going into your general settings that are required to get your system up and running. Later on the course, we're going to go back to the settings and review most advanced versions. But for now, we're going to focus on the very minimum that you need to get your system up and running and serve your users from the beginning. To do that, we're going to go to your menu on your left side and we're going to scroll down all the way down to settings. And in your settings, by default, you will see here that your service name is FileCloud. You can change this to be your company name. In our case, we can call it Demo Company. Once you make any change on this page, you will see that Save button shows up and it's highlighted. After you click on it, it will disappear. So you are, you are sure that your changes are being saved. The next thing that we're going to look into is our server URL. And for our demo purposes, we're going to name this video demo.fileCloudlabs.com. Okay. And there are other settings here that are important for your server setup. Uh, the first one that we have is the session timeout. This value is set in minutes. This means how much time is the browser going to wait if the session stays inactive? to expire the session. You, it's going to log out the users after that amount of time, so you can make sure to change the setting. Make note that this is only for the user portal and not for your admin portal. For your admin portal is a different setting that we're going to look at later. There's also a web dev checkbox here. This web dev is an older protocol that is used by desktop applications and web applications to access uh, systems like FileCloud, you can enable it in case you are using older desktop or older services that require the protocol. If not, we recommend you to disable it. There are other two major triggers here and make note that these two settings are global settings. When we say allow sync apps, it means that it's going to allow the FileCloud applications like sync or like the mobile devices sync functionality to make files available for offline access. This is a global uh, kill switch. So if you don't want to use synchronization at all in your file system, you can disable it here. You can also do some more granular work later on um, on a team folder based or in a network based. You can be very granular to what you want to allow sync or not. So just make sure that if you don't want to use it at all, you can uncheck it in here. You can also have the allow all devices to log in checkbox enabled. This means if, you're, if you upgrade your FileCloud server and in case you are expecting, for example, a new future that you're going to require all your users to have, you can make sure to check this box. Therefore, if they are only running an older version that the FileCloud server supports, they are going to be prompted to update to the latest. If you don't want to interrupt their work and continue to let them to log into the system, but still prompting them that there is a new version, you can uh, leave this checkbox enabled. The other three values here that it's important is your log level. This is going to determine how much information do you want to be saved on the server side logs. If you want to debug or try to understand something that is happening on your system, you can put this value on development. If uh, for regular, it's actually for production system and it's a daily basis, you can leave it up on production. It's going to create smaller size log files. And the other two settings is the language. You can set the admin and the user portal default language from this setting here. You have a few options between Arabic, Chinese, Dutch, French. If the language that you're looking for is not uh, showed up in here, please contact support and we can check the availability of your language in the future. Make note that the user portal language that you set here, the users can actually set their own language when they log into the user portal. So it doesn't have to be, it's a one setting for all, it's just the default for all and they can later change to a different language.